There we are. Okay, so thank you for joining us on Facebook. Uh, also, we're live uh, here at our church at 4601 39th Street and uh, also on our website, lyitl.org.com. Come, all right. So we're going. To, this will be kind of a short message tonight. Okay. So turn to, if you will, to Matthew five forty one. Matthew five forty one. All right. And this whole entire uh, sermon tonight that we're going to be giving, even though it's a short one, is going to be going the extra mile. Going the extra mile. Matthew five forty one. Okay. And he says, and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, or twice, Matthew 5, 21. This is a part of what we refer to as the Sermon on the Mount. And here Jesus is taking uh, principles of the law, the Old Testament law, and relating their relevance to the New Testament believer. And this particular section addresses the law of restitution. Now most of us say, hey, I'm a Christian that was easily forgive and forget and move on. That's not true. We're still human in flesh, all right? So, uh, uh, like I said, if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. This come out of Exodus chapter 21, 23 through 25. So here Jesus is talking in the New Testament and referring to the Old Testament, which says, if any uh, mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, foot, Burning for burning, wound for wound, strike for strike. But then, that was the law of restitution. Uh, that was given to deter people uh, from creating these offenses. Well, if I make somebody lose an eye, they're going to take my eye. If I have somebody lose a hand, I'm going to lose a hand. How many know if we had that law uh, of restitution today, it might make people think a little bit more? Amen? But that's, that's why they did that. And it was given to deter personal offenses. Also to ensure the retaliation was not greater than the offense. So uh, it'd be like if somebody uh, cut off your little finger, you could not take out their eye. It's very specific. It had to be their little finger, right? So once again, it was given to protect the rights of the innocent. And uh, when Jesus came, he changed everything. He even began to change how people looked at the law. Okay, He didn't really change the law, but he did change how they were to understand it and apply it. That is what threatened the religious crowd the most of that day. So listen to what Jesus had to say concerning the law of restitution. Turn to Matthew chapter 5 and look in verse 38 through 42. Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 through 42. And he says, And you have heard that it has been said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Out beside that, you can put down Exodus chapter 21, verses 23 through 25, all right? But I say unto you that ye resist, uh, not, he says, that ye resist not evil, for but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. In other words, don't retaliate, right? And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also, okay? And whosoever, and he goes a little farther, uh, shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, or twice, uh, or two miles, okay? And give to him that ask of thee, and from him that uh, would borrow of thee, uh, turn thou not away. So although the law protected the rights of the innocent, the righteous needed not necessarily claim their rights. Why is that? Instead of invoking their rights, and striking back or demanding payment, they, they, they could do, do ju just the opposite. So during the time of Christ, the Roman Empire, Lupi, was in control. And any Jew could be compelled to serve the Roman soldier or the official by carrying a burden or a load. Now, the Roman law required them to comply and go 1,000 paces or a Roman mile. So how long is 1,000 Roman paces? It's one mile, right? And after that, they could go about their own business. But Jesus taught them that although they had the right to stop at the one mile, he said uh, that they could choose to go on farther and to do more than what was required of them. That's a, that's a special phrase, to do more than what was required. And this is where we get the common phrase of going the extra mile. 
So what the Lord was asking was, was not to be an exception among believers, right? He says, but was to be the normal. This, this should be something we do on a normal basis, all right? And all of us strive to be known as the second milers, okay? Or what we call today the Christians, right? So let me give you some, some areas that we should go the extra mile. How about number one on your outline? Go the extra mile in forgiveness, okay? Jesus taught that we should uh, always exhibit a spirit of forgiveness. In Luke chapter 17, verses 3 through 4, Victoria says, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, what? Forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt what? Forgive him. All right? That's a hard verse for a lot of people. They want people to show that people want that they've changed, right? But Jesus says, unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, right? In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 22, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I shall forgive him? Till 70 times 7? And Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, until 7 times, but, but until 70 times Seven. That's 490 times, right? And uh, I'll never forget, Lady Karen was teaching our kids in the back about this lesson. And they asked the little boy that was there, said, so what do you do when you hit 490 and everything else? He said, well, then I'm done. <laughs> you know? But the fact is, it should be something we do naturally. We forgive each other, love each other, encourage each other. And uh, there was a lady who tried to harm me. I even had harmed our church. And uh, when I saw her, I opened my heart and my warm words and my arm, that they simply put my arm around her and everything. Uh, it was amazing uh, that she realized that I held no animosity to her. Even though they had harmed the church and it caused people to leave and everything else. But when I saw her, I just met her with open arms and love and forgiveness. All right? So... Uh, we find here that it talks about, uh, uh, yet when uh, recently I asked some folks to forgive me if I've ever offended them. Their response was, I forgive you for offending me, but not for what you did. Now that doesn't make sense to me. What's wrong with that picture, right? That isn't forgiveness. Real forgiveness is to act like it never happened and to forgive somebody completely. I do not find anywhere in the Word of God an excuse, Ryan, for us to not to forgive. But I do find where Jesus encourages us as Christians to go the extra mile, forgive each other. So what, what about my rights? Well, we may have a right to retaliate because the wrong is done against us, but our rights need to be what? Yielded to Christ. Okay? Listen to the command of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So the command applies to every believer and every situation that we find ourselves needing to handle. So it applies on the job, it applies here at the church, it applies in the neighborhood, even in your home. That ought to be our spirit, is a constant forgiveness, uh, and to let people know that we, we do that, by going the extra mile, okay? So if we go the extra mile in the areas of forgiveness, uh, we'll exhibit what's called the spirit of Christ to others. Why? Because Jesus said, if somebody uh, goes a mile with you and everything, then you go the extra mile, all right? So do, don't, don't do what's required do or what's expected. Do something that can only be done by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So this will pave the way for a witness and a ministry. Would, wouldn't it be possible for us to know as one who went overboard in forgiveness? Well, you know, people have come up to me, and, and in, I've been here for a long time. I've preached long enough that all the hair is gone, you know. Back doesn't work so well, you know. Don't sing like I used to. But the amazing thing is, uh, Victoria, is that I've come across people that, for whatever reason, left the church. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago, you know almost 30 years ago. I've been here a long time. And yet when I meet them, you know, it's amazing. 
what, what do they see? I hope they see a little bit of Christ in me. I act like nothing's ever happened. I open my arms to them, tell them I love them, and would love to have them come back and visit with us, all right? So we need to understand the philosophy of totally uh, what some people call anti-Christ. Why? I'm not just talking about like during the Christmas season where you forgive people, give them a present, you know, but, but we're to go the extra mile. We, we live in a very selfish and self-centered world. Uh, and people want to know what's in it for me, right? And so uh, giving is an expression of our love. Did you get that? Giving is an expression of our love. Tonight we'll be having a small little party uh, for uh, a little bitty one. She's been with us now for a year and what? A couple of days? A yeah, couple, couple of days, right? And uh, so uh, it, there's a banner right there. It says what? Be magical. And I like that. Uh, you know, people, they always love, I love doing magic tricks. And today we'll be doing a couple uh, after the part for our party. And uh, we're going to surprise her and try to make a memory, one that she'll say, wow. You know, even if she grows up, that she won't forget that memory. Why? And it should be the same way for the church. When people come, they, they're shocked to find out that there's no animosity. It's just love and kindness and tenderness, right? It's an expression of our love. Not just our love for others, but also our love for God, right? And it's possible to give uh, for the wrong reason and the wrong spirit. We know that. But true love demands that we give. Uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave. What did he give? His son. That we should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life, right? So, but true love demands that we give. And it demands that we forgive. So to have a positive impact on the world around us, and upon those whom we desire to minister to, we need to go to the extra mile in our area of service, our area of giving, our area of kindness to one another. But this I say, he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. Listen to what he says. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. So each man according as his purpose in his heart, so let him what? Give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, people have asked me, our website got hacked, and, and they wanted to know how they could take and, and maybe help out the ministry by being obedient to Christ. And, and if God laid on the heart, we had some people that watch our, our program every Sunday, and we love them with all of our heart. And they've actually been in our home once, and... Uh, they had some ups and downs, but, but the Lord laid on their heart and loopy that they, they not only love our church, but they also sent a really nice little offering to help our church. And we praise God for that. Why? Because giving is an expression of Christ-like love. Okay? So he says in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his purpose of heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. All right? So one who is a second miler is giving is one of, uh, who sows very bountifully. All right? Uh, there's, a lot, there's some people that put a lot of time in this ministry, not just coming to church and, and, and looking around, but, but, but helping out in so many different ways. And so... Uh, we know that, that Jesus is one who cheer, cheerfully gives from his heart. The result is that he will reap also what? Bountifully. And it's the same way with us. This is a law. It's like the law of gravity. You jump off of the building, you're going to hit the ground, right? So this is, this is one of the things that God really focuses on a lot. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. And uh, so the reaping was in the lives of others that were impacted with the gospel of, for eternity. We can read more about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 through 5. So we've learned here that we need to go what? The, uh, uh, the extra mile in what? Service. And if we go the extra mile in service, not we talked about the extra mile in forgiveness, but the extra mile in service, all right? And that's known as uncommon valor. Why? This phrase speaks of 
the recognition of someone who served our country. The key word here is uncommon. Why is that? Their service, that means it's, it's above and beyond the call of duty. And that was uncommon. Most churches, uh, loopy people come, they open their Bible, they, and they hear the preacher preach, and they sing three songs, they give an invitation, and they're gone. And nothing changed. Nothing empowered them. So here he's talking about uh, go the extra mile in service, and that is the uncommon valor. Why? It's uncommon to see Ryan seeing people really jump in and help out, and people to serve. So their service is above and beyond the call of duty. It is uncommon. My wife and I uh, had to be gone uh, for Friday and Saturday. We got back Saturday night. We came over here, and man, the room looks great. And uh, uh, we opened up the refrigerator, and normally that thing's empty, but it's it's piled up with cokes and everything else. Somebody went the extra mile, right? And so that's uncommon. So their service is above and beyond the call of duty. It is uncommon. So how would we evaluate our service to God? Unfortunately, uh, uh, there are many who do not serve at all, and even more who serve half-heartedly. And that's sad. Uh, when you think about it, every person here should be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All right? So, uh, and that means that we should surrender to his teachings, whether it's attending church, whether it's giving our tithes and our offerings. And, uh, but it's amazing how many people, uh, they say that only about 15% about of the people who attend church even give anything in the offering plate. Isn't that amazing? But yet the requirement is the same for every Christian. Go back and read Haggai and Malachi and see what the Lord says to your heart, all right? But if, God says, that if you want to get it right, return unto me, right? Uh, the tithe and the offering, right? So, so once again, unfortunately, there are many who do not serve at all, even more who serve half-heartedly, and a majority who give very little of even their time, all right? So, but your, your giving and your expression of love, listen, write this down, it does make a difference. It does make a difference. You see here in our church, we represent Jesus Christ and College Heights Baptist Church in the realm of influence. We want to influence people. And, and uh, it was so good today to see a, a member of our church that hasn't been with us for years. They live in a different place. And they moved to Plainview. And I'm so glad that Brother Richard was able to come last week, this week. He's hoping to come next week and bring his wife, all right? So uh, if somebody says, oh, man, it's too far to drive, go talk to Richard. He's coming from Plainview, amen? And, uh, but he's going the extra mile, and he smiles all the time, and he's always got something nice to say, and, and uh, always shows appreciation. You know, how, how would we evaluate our service to God? And uh, it, like I said, it does make a difference. We represent Christ at College Heights Baptist Church, and also known as Loving the Lord Ministries. That's our outreach ministry. But now then, we are what? Ambassadors of Christ. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5.20. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's deed, be you reconciled to God. So in other words, that's what an ambassador does. Helps to solve some problems and get, get people back together. And he says, now then, we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. You know? So people consider us and evaluate our church and our Lord by what we do. So if somebody new came to our church and everybody was shaking hands and smiling over in the corner, and that new person didn't have anybody to talk to, they're going to evaluate this church by the neglect that they found in the church. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. That's why we hug everybody. That's why we shake their hands. That's why we encourage them to come back, you know. And people consider us and evaluate our church, what? By our Lord and also by what we do. So our representation needs to be above and beyond the normal. You know, there are churches, listen, from our church, if you do a radius, there are churches all around us. So why would someone want to come to this church? Well, hopefully they found the love that maybe they didn't find going somewhere else. They found a way that the Bible could be taught with understanding, and they felt like they were part of a family, all right? So it all makes a difference. So good enough, if it's good enough for government work, 
uh, speaks of an attitude of service, but it's wrong attitude for the Lord's work. I used to tell people, as long, we were hanging some doors, uh, Victoria, and I said, well, as long as it opens and closes and locks, that's fine. And, and that was wrong. Why? Listen, it ought to be the best work in the world. We want to make it the best, all right? So what are our conclusions? I told you it would be a short service. If we're going to have a positive impact, I believe, on those around us for the cause of Christ, we need to be known as committed Christians. We need to know that, that, that we are committed to be like a mirror of Jesus Christ, all right? We must be willing to go the extra mile. How? We talked about it. In our forgiveness, in our giving, and in our service, all right? Uh, there's a radio spot called Beyond the Call. And again, we find stories of believers who, who are not satisfied with the mere existence in their Christian life, but those who, who want to go and make a difference, all right? Uh, we, we've got a young man on our Facebook. They're overseas and their country is closed, but they not only carry Bibles and rescue women that, that were in children, that were in uh, sex trafficking. They also teach them how, how to take a sow, but they also teach them how to dig a well. They're doing a great job. And so again, we find stories of believers who are not satisfied with just merely showing up uh, you know, to a service. Uh, there are those who want to what? Make a difference. I hope that's the phrase that you'll remember today. Will you be one of those that wants to make a difference? Will you be one of those who's gone the extra mile as God deals with us but Kayla, let us be open and surrendered to do his will that we might be of what he wants us to be so why not just decide tonight you know what that preacher's right I'm going to try to make it to every service Hebrews 10 25 I'm going to give my tithes and offerings Haggai and Malachi and Matthew uh, it, it, once again people have a problem sometimes with their giving but listen we, we cannot take and achieve what we want to achieve unless there are people who are surrendered and willing to give up their heart, their time, and their talent. Amen. But we do it for Christ. But we do it for this ministry because this is what a ministry of Christ. And when you walk in that door, I hope you feel the love of God. And when we preach and teach, I hope you begin to understand the Word of God. And then I hope whenever you get ready to leave that you've made a decision. I'm going to take and max this out. I'm not just going to be an average Christian. I'm going to be one that goes the extra mile. And if you haven't received Christ as your Savior, I encourage you to pray this prayer. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you deal with the hearts, even now, that need you for salvation. And here's the prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know you're the Savior. And you died for my sins. And I pray that you would come into my heart right now, forgive me and save me, make me a child of God, give me a home in heaven with you when I die, and when the Holy Spirit comes in, Lord, may I think differently, love differently, and serve differently in such a way that it brings glory and honor to you, and that others might see a change in our life, that they'll want to know how come the change and we just simply say, it's because of Jesus the Christ. He came into my life. He saved me. He changed me. I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. And all the God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right.